So, you know that the mole is defined to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23 things, let's say particles. And apart from investigating issues like what would happen if you had a mole of moles, the mole is usually used in chemistry to think about numbers and ratios of atoms or molecules or ions or things of that kind. The problem here though is that we can't possibly count an actual mole of things. As an exercise, try calculating how long it would take you to count from one to a mole. So to solve this, we need to be able to convert a mole into something that's easy to measure on our human time scale and using human equipment. Well, when a grocer measures out cherries, they don't count out individual cherries, but they'd weigh out a certain mass, say a kilo of cherries. And if you knew how much an average cherry weighed, you could calculate how many cherries were in that kilo. The same principle applies in chemistry. We do know how much atoms weigh, so we can work out how much one mole of those atoms weighs. And we can then convert between the mass of a sample of, say, carbon, and how many moles of atoms are in that sample. The quantity that we use to do this is known as molar mass, and it's numerically equivalent to the mass of one mole of a substance. So the molar mass of carbon is the mass of one mole of carbon atoms. If you have one mole of pure carbon-12 isotope, that's 12.000000 etc. grams. Remember, that's how we defined the mole in the first place. But if you have ordinary carbon, which is a mixture of mostly carbon-12 with a bit of carbon-13 and carbon-14 mixed in, the mass of one mole will be slightly heavier because a small proportion of the atoms are of those heavier isotopes. It will weigh 12.011 grams. Notice that this number is the same number that you've understood as the atomic weight that's listed on the periodic table. A neat and intentional consequence of the way that the atomic mass number and the mole are defined, both using carbon-12 as a standard, is that the numerical value for the atomic weight of an atom is the same as the mass of a mole of those atoms. The only thing that's different is the units. The atomic mass unit, when you're measuring individual atoms, and grams, when you're measuring moles of atoms. So for instance, the average atomic weight of iron is 55.85 atomic mass units, and the mass of one mole of iron atoms is 55.85 grams. The average atomic weight of a helium atom is 4.003 atomic mass units, and the mass of one mole of helium, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 helium atoms, is 4.003 grams. Now, there's one thing we have to be really careful about when we say that molar mass is the mass of one mole. If you're asked the mass of something, what units would you express it in? Well, mass units, grams or kilograms. For moles, it's usually grams. But molar mass is not an ordinary mass. It's a ratio. It's the mass per mole of a substance. So its units are grams per mole. This doesn't change the value of the number at all, but it makes a big difference when you're trying to get your units to cancel out nicely in calculations. And it's also an important aspect of proportional thinking. The mass of one mole of something is kind of a one-use number. There's not much you can do with it other than know the value of that mass. But re-expressing it, rebranding it, if you like, as a ratio, the mass per mole, means that mathematically we can now apply it to any number of moles to find out what mass they would have. So this is the relationship. The molar mass of a substance in grams per mole equals the mass in grams divided by the moles in mole. You can rearrange this equation to make mass the subject or moles depending on what information you have available to you and what it is that you want to calculate. So let's do some problems involving molar mass. First, what's the molar mass of sulphur? Well, sulphur is an element, so this means we can look it up on the periodic table. So we go to the periodic table and we look for the mass number under the element symbol of sulphur. So here's sulphur and there's the mass number, 32.06. Now this means two things, this number. It means that the average atomic weight of a sulphur atom is 32.06 atomic mass units. And it also means that the mass of one mole of sulfur atoms is 32.06 grams. From this, we directly get the molar mass. 
If one mole of sulfur weighs 32.06 grams, then the molar mass of sulfur is 32.06 grams per mole. Note that we can write grams per mole as grams slash mole or grams dot moles to the minus one. It means the same thing. Okay, how about water? Water is not an element, but like everything in the universe, it is made up of elements. The formula for water is H2O. So one water molecule is made up of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. If you have two water molecules, then there are two oxygen atoms and four hydrogen atoms. And if you have one mole of water molecules, that means you have one mole of oxygen atoms and two moles of hydrogen atoms. This means that we can work out the molar mass of water by adding together the molar masses of the atoms that make it up. So to work this out, we need the values for the molar mass of oxygen and the molar mass of hydrogen. So we go back to the periodic table and we find oxygen here at 15.999 and hydrogen here at 1.008. So we're going to go back and put those in and then we're going to calculate that and it comes out as 18.015 grams per mole. Don't forget the units. So that means that one mole of water weighs 18 grams. Okay, let's try a slightly harder one. What's the molar mass of aluminium hydroxide? As with the water example, the first thing you need to do is write down the formula for the compound. Now, aluminium has a valence of three plus, it's in group three. The hydroxide ion has a charge of minus one. So when we put those together, that gives us the formula of Al brackets OH3. Now to work out its molar mass, you can see I'm going to need the molar masses of aluminium, oxygen and hydrogen. So I'm going to write those down first. Now I have oxygen and hydrogen already, 15.999 and 1.008. We add aluminium to that, 26.981. All right, now I can put them together. Now one unit of aluminium hydroxide, remember I can't say a molecule because this is an ionic substance, contains one aluminium ion, three oxygen atoms and three hydrogen atoms. So to work out the molar mass of aluminium hydroxide, I need to put together the mass of the aluminium plus three times the mass of the oxygen plus three times the mass of the hydrogen. And that gives me a final molar mass of 78.002 grams per mole. All right, now let's try a problem that involves us finding out how many moles of aluminium hydroxide are in a certain mass. I'm going to set this out in two different ways. One is just to use the formula I gave you before. The other will use the kind of format that I've also used in the videos on unit conversions. Now here's the problem. If I have 23.4 grams of aluminium hydroxide, how many moles of aluminium hydroxide is this? So first of all, write down what you know. You know that the mass is 23.4 grams. Uh, you also know the molar mass of aluminium hydroxide because we've just calculated it. You might come at a problem like this cold and not know the molar mass straight away, but it's always something that you can calculate as long as you've got a periodic table handy. So I have the mass, I have the molar mass, and what I want to know is the moles. Now we know from before that the molar mass equals the mass over the moles. I can rearrange that to make moles the subject. I multiply both sides by moles and divide both sides by molar mass. And that gives me that the moles equals the mass over the molar mass. Then all I have to do is substitute in the values that I know and get the answer. And because my mass had three significant figures, I'm going to round this off to three sig figs. Now I'm going to do the same problem, but I'm going to set it out in a slightly different way. Again, I need to write down what I know. So I have the mass, I have the molar mass, and I want to know the moles but I'm going to set it out a bit like a unit conversion. So first of all, I will put down what I know as a fraction, 23.4 grams over one. And the conversion factor is my molar mass in grams per mole. But I have a mass that's in grams and I want to cancel out those grams and turn it into moles. So I'm gonna flip my molar mass upside down. The 78.002 grams will go on the bottom and the one mole 
will go on the top. Just take a minute to look at this if this is confusing you. All I've done is take a conversion factor that looks like that and flipped it on its head. I've inverted it like that in exactly the same way as you invert your conversion factors when you're doing unit conversions. I can now cancel out the grams and I'll be left with moles when I do this conversion. So I multiply out the top and bottom of the fraction, I do the calculation and I come out with exactly the same answer as before. Now which of these two formats you use is up to you. My advice is if you have a tendency to mix up algebraic conversions and are a bit sloppy with your units, use the second format, the one that's like unit conversions. It will keep you on the straight and narrow. Ideally though you would practice rearranging equations until you felt confident with it because we will use bigger and more complicated formulae later on in the course that will definitely need rearranging. However, as you see both formats work perfectly.